Welcome to my channel, Rick Hopple's channel. My name is Rick Hopple, obviously. So, and today we have some interesting, I hope it is at least, for some people. So, we'll check out what I got here. Now, this is a video basically about my trip around Australia in 11 days, or 12 days, I think, maybe. Uh, I think maybe I cut it off at one point anyway. I think it's 12 days trips around Australia. If I'm not mistaken. Can't believe I went to stretch, but just by my hand. So we were stopping anywhere along the way. <laughs> so, but I may have just uh, cut it in half or something like that. Got halfway and then just saved my progress. Anyway, this is uh, the uh, channel for. Yeah, this is going to be more like a live stream in that uh, I'm not going to do much editing on this. So what you get is what you got. What you got is what you get type thing. And uh, I may edit, do some minor editing to cut out like the beginning parts and stuff that don't fit or whatever. But we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm hoping I won't mess up too much stuff so I have to do massive editing on this thing. It's I don't have really time for that today, so it's just uh, how it comes out is how it comes out for the most part. And so we got that, and we have a we do have a pause button though, so I can't pause the video at any time. I need to, to so I'll warn you when I'm going to do that, so you know what's happening. At any rate, today we're going to do part one of our trip around Australia in twelve days, and. What happened was, is I started in Sydney, Australia. Now let's switch over to that screen. She now sees it all of Australia here on the map. I started off in Sydney, Australia, and I went in in Sydney, Australia. Now why that? Well, I did that because. I'd spent the most time playing around in Sydney, and one day I was playing around in Sydney, just flying around, and I said, hey, why don't I fly to Melbourne now that I know more about entering flight plan, getting a heading, and all that kind of stuff. So I thought, well, sure, why not? So I flew to Melbourne, which is a city down here, on the southern coast of, of uh, Australia. Victoria Providence. So I flew down there and then I I had some three stops along the way but since I wasn't thinking I was going to record this and do all the stuff I just did with it but that I <laughs> I uh, went through from Sydney to Melbourne and I stopped three times I didn't record down exactly well. I think Hanna Bear was one of the places I may have stopped. So at least it has some of the same dimensions that I did. And I flew in this one city I remember we were there. Also I crashed one time on this this trip. I crashed a plane <laughs> trying to land it. I bounced and got out of control and then it, in fiery flames, all virtually, of course. Nobody's hurt. No, 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 no planes were hurt in this exercise. So, at any rate, only crashed one time though on the whole trip so far. Let's hope this last stretch doesn't. Well, it proves it seems like it's not going to be that hard. You never know what's going to happen. Might come in Sydney and just totally destroy the plane. Who knows? Be a shame, but. Stuff happens like that. So we may have flew to Melbourne. And I got to Melbourne and said, maybe I could go to Adelaide. Also, I must mention, I've never visited Australia. I've never been to Australia. And it'd be an interesting place to go to sometime, I'm sure. But if I pronounce these names wrong, it's not how the locals pronounce it. And forgive me, please, because I don't really know how you pronounce those names. So I just have to pronounce it however it looks to me, like the proper way to pronounce it. 
Kimbera, if you say it more Spanish style or something like that. But I don't know how it's said, so. And I've heard Melbourne said, pronounced Sydney, obviously, Bisbane. Those kind of sense things, but Adelaide, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, Adelaide or Delide or Delide or Delaide. What? If I had to pronounce it, it looks to me Adelaide. Adele Aid, like that. <laughs> so anyway, I flew from Melbourne to Adelaide. And now it's interesting, all the major cities seem to be from here, from Brisbane on down through Perth. Big cities, as you see, it shows up on this list here. The big cities. So I went to Delhi now. I stopped at In Hill. It's a little podunk community or town or airport out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, stopped there to get gas. Now, I have to explain something. Because on an X plane, which is one of the flight simulator I'm using, on this, it. Um, it basically you can fuel anytime you want. You can raise your fuel levels. I wish I'd known that one time when I was running out of gas and I was almost to my destination. But <laughs> on another, another totally unrelated flight, Papua New Guinea. But but yeah. <laughs> but you can fill up anytime you want, pretty much. But I tried to make it somewhat realistic in that I only tried to fill up at airports. I was in an airport. Sometimes forgotten and fell up right afterwards, but to make it as realistic possible, I'll try to only use airports to fill up at. Even though I can fill up in the middle of the year, and if I had to, I would, but but yeah, so so I stopped at Inn Hill. I stopped at three places from Sydney to Melbourne, and only once to El El Day El Adelaide. So <laughs> yeah. So I went to Melbourne in Delhi. So what was the difference? Because they looked like about the same distance almost. And they almost are pretty much. I think Delhi is a little bit shorter of a distance. It's like about 700 plus miles from Sydney to Melbourne. And it's about 500 some odd miles to Delhi from Melbourne. Just as a crow flies. And well, the big difference was that, that uh, see, in airplanes, they have weights and balances and all this kind of stuff. And part of the weight and balance is how amount of fuel you carry. Now, the plane that I was using is a Cirrus SR-22. It's a single-engine, propeller-driven plane. got 350 horsepower, I think, so it's still stronger than your standard Cessna and stuff like that. Fly a little faster, all that kind of stuff. But it, um, yeah, it has limits on how much you can take weight-wise. So you, after you add up everything in your in your your passengers, your crew, your weight, people, weight of people, cargo, anything you carry on a plane has to be weighed and measured. Now they have estimates that they use to, to get a rough idea of commercial air flights, how much person weighs, that kind of stuff. But they do have weight and balances. You have a center of gravity you try to keep it within. So they had the crew. I was the only crew on there. They had the crew to sit 500 some pounds. <laughs> Pilots, 500 some pounds. Well, I weigh what pilot that's be. I weigh 189. I was able to reduce 189 down after I went to Melbourne and said, hey, what's going on? This, I lowered my way down and I was able to carry more fuel then without being overtaxed. So that was the difference why I suddenly was able to stop at, I had to stop at three airports on the way to Melbourne to get gas. I only stopped at one and on the way to L Day and other places. I was able to do long stretches of a time to write where I didn't have to get gas. So that was my. Uh, reason why I was able to do that. So I went to Delhi, landed there. It's a nice little city in South Australia. The province. And then now I, I went to a little town called 
Ooh, uh, how do you see it? Usila. Usila. Yes, Usila. I don't know how to pronounce that in, in uh, Australia, but it's E U C L A. It's a little old town up here in South Australia, about just right about somewhere around, around there. We'll type in the the E C U. Oops. There we are. It's in Western Australia. And there's you see that apparently it has a wide territorial day. It's just a little town right there. <laughs> it has an airport, a little airport, not much of one, but it's got an airport. It's right. There. So I flew from Adelaide to Sulu one day. That's because I realized I couldn't go all the way to Perth, which is my ultimate destination. Originally, I thought, well, let's see if I make it to Perth at least. So I went to Perth. <laughs> so I went to that town there, and then I was able to fly the rest of the way. About an equal 500 mile trip over to to Perth. And on all this stuff so far, I've had nice, clean, nice days. No, no rain, no nothing. Perfect flying weather. Sometimes a little windy, but otherwise pretty good. Pretty good. So I got to Perth. And then I flew up. Now this one, I'm questioning where I must have saved, uh, saved it one day. And on here, so I got to Perth and I decided, well, I possibly could make it to Port Headland up here, right there, Port Headland. Could make it to Port Headland, but I didn't know for sure. But if you see from Perth there, you're kind of a significant portion of Western Australia, and you can totally say I sort of went around the circumference of, of Austin. And a couple of pieces up here because just out of necessity and stuff, but, but uh, I didn't cut off. It does too big a chunk of what Australia to take out pretty much right there. Now, it's so over 700 miles now. I've flown 700 miles one day. But I thought, well, you know, if I go over to the Brown Exmouth, so that's one I'm not sure if that's Exmouth or Exmouth or what. But anyway, it looks like Exmouth to me. So, <laughs> so anyway, I wondered, well, I could fly over here and then fly over there. It's a little further raw, but it may match the comforts of the of the continent better so i did that so i didn't fly to Exmouth. i was flying to a city actually flew out to a city south of there called lear month like lear and month like january february april may so it's not listed on here because it doesn't show up on the map on the map but it's right about there Let's see where am I? it's right about there just south of Exmouth ways. And then I flew to Port Headland. Here's where it gets interesting a bit. Because the next city I flew to is about approximately up here somewhere. And I flew to Gib Bay. Gib River, that is. Gib River. I flew to Gib River. G I B B. River, you know how to spell that, I'm sure. And, uh, and the airport there now is called Gibb River Airport, just like that. Gibb River Airport. And I think it's right about here. Let's check out exactly where it's at. Yeah. 
There, give us some Australia. There's Gibb. They just call it Gibb for short, but full name of the airport is Gibb River Airport, apparently. So now, let's see. Let's see where it was in relation to Port Hedland. So it was right there. I flew up here to Gibb. These cities, small cities, have big extraterrestrial, extraterritorial jurisdictions, don't they? That's a pretty big swath of 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 uh, Australia there for one thing so that's where I flew there now give river I was originally after I after I hit Perth after I landed at Perth oh well should I go further should I go all the way around or what so I decided to finally go all the way around plan my cities where I was going to go to from there uh, I didn't have any plans for between Gibb and, and Carnes over here. This is where I plan to fly for my next stop. But it's like I didn't realize how far apart they were. It's like over a thousand miles. <laughs> so I thought, wow, I can't fly that one day, that's for sure. So I. Uh, Cut it in half, Mountain City, by midway between Gibb River, between Gibb and uh, Carnes. That's a, a little city called uh, MacArthur. And the name of the airport is MacArthur Airport, obviously. So it, uh, I went there now. Let's see where that's at. And there's all my cars that you imagine here. It's Northern Territory. There. Northern. Show me a River Mine Airport. Yeah, it's called my River. Name of the city and the um, it doesn't even list it has on its extra territorial jurisdiction like that one did. Anyway, MacArthur River Airport right there. And, uh, and the airport is called MacArthur River Mine Airport. So, you got that. And uh, so I thought, cool. It's about right, right at a halfway point between between the two seas, Gibb and Carnes. So I thought, well, that's cool. But then I encountered my first rainstorm. Because what I have is they have a function where you can download real weather. So I put real weather on here. So the, whatever the weather is, forecast or something in a certain area, it'll try to match that as closely as possible. The simulator will. And I got into a big rear rainstorm coming into MacArthur real thick and heavy and it was like after I after I broke through the clouds coming down out of it because it came from like 6,000 feet I think it was at the time six or five thousand and I came down and when I hit about 2,500 I broke out of the clouds but then it was like the lambs almost right there had to be careful about not Lamming myself into the ground, and it's hard to see through all the rain that was pouring down because this particular aircraft doesn't have windshield wipers, it just depends, I guess, on the propeller blowing the water off the windshield type thing. So, yeah, so anyway, I said, How am I going to do this? So, I had GPS so I could tell whether, whether I was too low to hit terrain or not, and I had that warning on. And I also had a GPS to the airport in the direction of the, of the airport runways. So I had that to go by. So I was trying to line up so I could get in there. And somehow, when I finally saw the airport through the window, I saw the runway of the airport, 
it was I was perpendicular to it for one thing, so that was bad. But two, I was amazingly really too high <laughs> tie to get down to it safely even at that point. So oh well what do I want to do? Because I didn't want to lose the airport because I've done it before where I've I've gone out and come back in, tried to come back in, and I couldn't find the airport. And then this range number, I wasn't sure I was ever going to find it again. Who knows what was going to happen in that regard. So I decided to circle down, lose a little altitude that way, so I just made one big circle. Also, I was hoping maybe I could make the circle up long enough or something that I could just uh, line up with the runway when I came out of, out of the pattern or something. But uh, it was not to be... I came in when I finally saw the runway again. It was in the same position <laughs> as it was the last time, except I was a little lower now. Still a little high, but still. So I thought, well, it's now or never. Now, if I was a real commercial airplane pilot, I wouldn't do this. I would have probably never even flown into the storm to begin with. I didn't realize what was happening. I didn't know the weather was ahead and all that kind of stuff. But I didn't know what was coming at me and what, was, what, was, what, what I was getting into. So... And uh, you certainly, most pilots, even if they were in that situation, would just take off to a go around. And if they couldn't come in safely the next time pass, they would uh, go to an alternate destination they'd already selected by the time. So it's have to all alternates, you know. But I was a simulator. I wasn't going to hurt myself flying if I crashed plane, I crashed plane type thing. So. Thought, well, I'm gonna see if I can do this without crashing the plane. So I, I took off and I swung in to the lineup of there, the runway. But then, as luck would have it, well, not luck. It was lucky. I was lucky the way the airport was designed in the in the field out the front. But what had happened was that when I was landing, busy landing up the runway and losing speed so that I could land safely. Uh, I came to the end of the runway. Now, it's a pretty big runway. It's not that short of a runway, but I used the whole thing pretty much trying to get down and lined up and then I landed and hit the runway at the right spot if I was coming from the other direction. <laughs> so, uh, so I ran off the roadway. But luckily for me, it was a flat area, plain grass area. No real problems that I had. So I was able to come to the stop, turn around, taxi back to the runway, and back to the airport. And I was home free. Now you thought after all that I'd be done, right? No. Well, see, I was, um, even though the plane was good and I was good and all that stuff, I didn't really want to stay there. You want to stay in the green. I don't know how long this is going to last. What's going to happen? So, I decided to fly right back out once I got my gas up and stuff. And this is one of the few times I've done this. But anyway, I took off and uh, set my altitude at 9,000 because I wanted to see. I was kind of curious to see how high these clouds went, for one thing. Hoping at 9,000 I'd be able to tell, or if I not, I'd go higher. Well, I got up to 9,000 feet as I was flying along, going through all these white clouds, thick white clouds. Couldn't see anything but white anywhere. And then finally it broke through the top of right at about 9,000 feet. <laughs> so I was skimming the top of these clouds at 9,000 feet. It's pretty cool, actually, and uh, for a while. And... I was able to show all that. Excuse me, man. I got a little bit of congestion where you know, so. Yeah, you can ignore that if you hear me sniffle or stuff like that, hopefully. And so anyway, I've, after a little while of flying between clouds, because there's like a, some lighter fluffier clouds up above that occasionally rained on me. But uh, all the other the other clouds was all below me. The thick layer where it gets thick and yucky down below. You can't see any, nothing, hardly. So that's the story of that adventure in MacArthur River. Or MacArthur River Mine Airport. They like to call it there. So, yeah. So that's 
So anyway, if I kind of, after I got, was flying along in there, I kind of decided, hey, this is not the, uh, this is not the, well, I was tired. <laughs> I was late. It was time to go to bed, that kind of thing. And so after I flew for a while and the clouds above me and the clouds below me and he ran on every once in a while, that kind of thing, I said, I'm ready for bed. So I decided to save my progress on my journey, which you can do on X-Plane, so I could pick up where I left off the next day, which I did. And the next day I started flying and it was a lot clearer. I could see the ground and all that kind of stuff because there were clouds in the sky, but it was broken clouds and and there wasn't much rain in the area, so I was able to fly on to Perth in good time, good measure, and landed at Perth. That's why I think maybe I... That's when I, when I got to Perth, I had to make a decision. Do I want to go all the way around or not, or what? So I decided to go around. And I picked out the other cities that I was talking about. And... No, no, no. Perth is earlier than MacArthur River. Flew down to Carnes. Excuse me, pardon me. And landed in Carnes in good measure. You know where Carnes is, I showed you on the map before. So, uh, that's the boring part, but mostly it's cloudy. I couldn't see much down below anyway, so it was over water. And uh, anyway, I flew over here to Carnes. And, uh, excuse me while I blow my nose. We came back. So. So here are Carnes. And, uh. Yeah. Not eventful of that part. I think I paused it and went to bed somewhere around where it was over the land, over, over the bay here. So I put on the Clarence there. Uh, the next step I had was Bisbane. That's on down here. You ran over where Bisbane is, right? It's right here on the western, eastern coast of Australia. Right there. Bisbane. So I flew to Bisbane with an eventful there. And that's where I'm at now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to record the last leg of my journey from Bisbane to uh, Sydney, Australia. And even though a lot of people like my wife find this boring, there's people out there that like to watch this stuff anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. I'm going to record the whole thing in part two of this series here, short series. And... Uh, Fly me to Brisbane, and you can all rejoice with me when I get to Sydney and land, because I've gone all the way around Australia. I've not heard anybody do this before, so who knows what, but anyway, that'll be a fun thing to do, and it was, has been fun. It's been very interesting to go visit the different cities, even if it was virtually, and uh, see things that most people haven't seen that much. I saw one airport, I don't remember which one it was, but there's one airport that looked like it was on, on a little island on dry river bed. Not dry river, dry lake bed. And it was just a slow, I mean, when I was coming, I saw there's an island out there. I thought to myself, hmm, that's shaped sort of like an airport could fit on it. Sure enough, when I got closer, there was an airport there. I said, there is an airport there. Oh, no. So, uh, saw some interesting configurations of airports. There was one where it had a wrong way and it had all these uh, taxiways or something spiking out like a big asterisk. 
have been put there at the end of the runway. <laughs> so it's interesting the way they did these things sometimes. Interesting names of cities, interesting topography, that kind of thing. So if you want to watch the next video and see me finish my circumvent around Australia, you be my guest. Maybe someday I actually get to go there. I don't think I want to spend hours and hours like I've been for the last several days, 12 days. I spent an average of three to five, six hours on some occasions flying over a 12-day period. So that if you add up average, say, say average about four hours, four or five hours, five hours, say five hours a, a day, then it would be five times 12, which would be... 80. I can't think right now. I'm under pressure. <laughs> or I'm under pressure. So anyway, five hours. Five times two is ten. Sixty. Sixty. That's right. Sixty. I knew that answer, but I couldn't bring it up in my head right away. Anyway, so sixty. And uh, it's been about around, somewhere around sixty hours flying around Australia. I'm not sure I want to do that. I mean, if I went to Australia, but maybe I wouldn't by then, who knows? If I was able, if I had gotten a real pilot license and all that kind of stuff, maybe I would, but I don't know, that's just a pipe dream for the most part. <laughs> My wife wouldn't have me flying around as a Parkinson's patient. <laughs> flying around Australia all by myself. So, at any rate, that's uh, my journey. Up to this point, I sit in Bisbane waiting to take off. Hopefully later on today or tomorrow. And I'll uh, have that video out when I get it out. Soon and then, I'll watch. Hopefully you'll have a chance to watch this video and get the backstory on everything that happened. Up to this point, my trips around Australia. And, uh, yeah. One thing I need to explain to y'all guys before I go is that the uh, is why I'm here. I mean, in this building, in this spot right now. It doesn't look anything like any of my previous videos where we've been. That's because our apartment is being worked on significantly. For those of you who don't know, uh, we had a kind of semi-crisis appear because uh, we had a leak in our ceiling. Now, this ceiling has been leaking ever since we've been living here, pretty much. Every time it rains or something, the leaves we leak somewhere. Most, most of the time, you can count on it. And so they said, we're going to fix this permanently. The, the maintenance people at our apartment complex did that. So they... Uh, they basically uh, decided to do that, and and they they have right right now they have a big hole in their ceiling, probably right around that right now it's probably a lot bigger, but but uh, we had this big giant hole in our ceiling over our living room table, the plastic covering it, that kind of thing, and it kept leaking anyway. So they decided to replace our entire roof. So they did. We we survived while we were living there, with the roof being worked on and such. But what happened was, is that they thought they fixed it. So they were going to work the next week. This did right now. They're going to be working on the the drywall and doing all that and replacing the ceiling and stuff. They're going to do that while we were probably out here anyway. So at any rate, what it boiled down to is that we came in the weekend and it had been raining and snow melting and stuff and leak again. They weren't too happy about that for sure. After they replaced the roof, it was still leaked. So they were going to really go to town. I think they found the leak. They said they believe they found the leak and they're going to fix it and get everything back together and put it, pull it back together. So by next Tuesday, 
that's almost a week from today, the, they're going to replace the roof and do get a lot of fixed stuff so that when we come back to next Tuesday, it should be in good shape. We hope, pray. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't leak anymore. So, yeah, so anyway, that's our plan. But anyway, we're stuck in a hotel right now. So that's why I'm having my my equipment, which isn't that great. I mean, it's good. It works a lot better than a lot of other stuff, but it's it's probably just the uh, video quality isn't quite as good right now. And uh, the uh, the sound maybe hopefully is good, but isn't as good as it normally is my, my more professional mic that I have at home. Yeah, so we couldn't we couldn't bring we couldn't go one after we left yesterday. I guess after we left Monday, Monday's when we moved over here. After we left then, we couldn't go back to get anything else, so we had to try to make sure we had everything we could bring. So I brought computers and other things so I could do this. Uh, fly simulator. But since we're on a hotel connection, which is 10 megabytes download speed, 2 megabytes per second uh, upload speed. It's really not enough bandwidth, really, to do live stream, which is what I intended to do originally. So, it's the next close thing I'm doing, recording video like I'm doing a live stream, but I'm doing it with a regular video. I'm going to do some minor editing on this puppy to attach this space, this much space to the end of it. And uh, so that's what's going on. That's why it's on this setting and it doesn't look quite as sharp as maybe some other videos have in the past and things like that so but we do what we can right so maybe next week I'll, when we move back in our side I'll be back sharp my sharp I have run a not only a screw guy channel so some of you probably from there after I now it's over there it's going on and uh from the Linux Saloon community and stuff. Uh, appreciate y'all's help, support in this time, but we, uh, we working hard to, to get, I mean, we're working hard to get, I'm not working really that hard, I'm working mediocrely hard, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. We will we'll do okay, so we'll check with y'all later and but part two will be along shortly. Maybe today. Who knows? Depends on how the situation goes. Until then. I always say may the Linux force be with you. It doesn't apply to this since channel because it's not really about Linux here. But only the thing that the Linux says this computer is running on Linux. Yep, I'm recording the whole thing on Linux. Computer and all. So when it crashes, you'll be saying, aha, I thought so. <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, Windows crashes too. So everybody's on the same playing field, basically. But you're right. We will see you next time. Bye.